I'm going to be showing you how to use, there's two options, advanced Pixlr. Playful Pixlr is more simple. It's kind of more like the options you'd see on Instagram or on your phone editor. Um, advanced is similar, more similar to Photoshop. And that's why I'm teaching you advanced is so that um, you can you know, learn a few things because it seems complicated until you have someone kind of show you. So that's why I'm here doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna click on open image. Um, and I'm going to choose it from my Google Drive. And I have to move this because that window is in the way. Okay. And um, when, I, when I don't know what size I want my photo, what resolution, I'm just going to stick with centered. The one in the middle. Okay. Um, first thing you want to do is if you need to rotate your image, you just need to use image, image rotation. Zooming in and zooming out. So what I found is if I use my two fingers on my Chromebook to zoom in, that zooms in my whole screen and all, all that stuff. So I take my two fingers and I squish them together. So I, I want to see all my, um, options here. If you don't see all these options, you need to zoom out. Now, if you want to zoom in on your image, use this little slidey tool right here. Okay. Um, I know where you want to use our fingers, but then that just zooms in the whole screen, not just your image. Okay. So this way I can just zoom in on my image. Okay. So first thing I did was, sorry, did the wrong thing first, image, image rotation and rotate it the correct way. Okay. Then we're going to crop. So this is the cropping tool right here. It's very similar to the one in Google that you're used to. Okay, and some things to consider when you're cropping. Um, right now I'm on free, which means I can make my rectangle any ratio I want, but I'm gonna use ratio because if you're doing a square, you wanna keep your ratio one to one. So that means whatever size you do this, it will remain a square. It'll keep your ratio the same, okay? And think about zooming in and cropping on your favorite, most interesting area. That's one way to just eliminate unnecessary details or distracting stuff is zoom in and crop on the on the best area of your still life. Okay. Um, other ratios, if you're doing a rectangle and you just want a nice, basic, familiar rectangle, three to four is a really good ratio. Um, or if you want it horizontal, you'll put four here and three there. Okay. Um, three to four is a uh, very um aesthetically pleasing familiar rectangle that um most canvases and paper are going to be very similar to that ratio okay all right um and then i'm just going to size that down and zoom in and crop on my favorite areas um as you can see the rule the lines here for rule of thirds are on there so you can line up some of your most um interesting things with that rule of thirds my largest makeup palette is kind of a focal point so i'm going to have that kind of be on my rule of thirds line um, i still have a lot of empty space right here so i'm going to zoom in and crop just a tiny bit more um and maybe so another thing to consider is do you want your still life contained or uncontained? Contained means everything stays within the frame. Uncontained means you have things going outside of your frame, which makes a very dynamic and interesting image. Okay, I'm going to hit apply. Now, if you ever crop and you don't like it, you can, you can just go to edit undo. There's also the history right here, which you can't see because I'm filming my screen right here and that window has to be there. So I can't even move it. It's kind of annoying. Um, but underneath it, this history, it'll list everything you've done editing wise underneath it. And if you don't like anything you've done, you can just click back and revert back to however many steps you want. Okay. So that's kind of nice to see what you've done. All right. Now that it's a little smaller, I'm going to zoom in. Okay, the next thing you want to do is edit the lighting. Actually, okay, at this point you need to decide, are you going to be doing a black and white medium or color medium? If you're going to do color medium, I want you to um, skip this next step and save it till the end. If you're going to be doing black and white medium, this next step, you're going to change your image black and white right now. So you're going to go to adjustment, and you're gonna go to desaturate, and that turns your image into a black and white image, okay? And then you'll continue your editing here because you wanna edit it to be a black and white image. 
Now, if your final image needs to be color, then I don't want you to desaturate right now. Okay. Oops. I need to go to undo. Undo. Okay. Color's back. All right. Now I want to show you how to adjust your lighting. This image is quite dark. Okay. And so um, there are a million ways to edit lighting. Highlights and shadows, exposure, curves, levels. What I've found helps the most, in my opinion, is I go to levels. And you can see this kind of um, graph here. And this is graphing out your values, your midtones, your darks, your lights. Now, what you want is you want, and then you have these three arrows that you can slide and manipulate. Okay. Um, I'm going to move this over so you can see what it does to the image. Um, as you can see, since this is a very dark image, all my graph stuff is closer to the darker end. I've got this big gap here where my lights are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my light arrow closer to the peak. Do you see how that's lightening my image in a very natural way um, that does not wash everything out, all the detail out? Okay. Now, if I go too far, then that's getting to be too much. Okay, you want it kind of near the base of where those values are starting, this where the graph is starting. Okay, um, and then you can move your lower one in um, towards the bottom of that thing. Okay, you can see my darks are getting darker. Now I don't want them to look pitch black and lose all the details, so that was too much. So I don't know that I even needed to do that at all. Maybe a titch, okay? And then I rarely do anything with the midtones, but you can change the general um, lightness and darkness of your midtones, okay? But I don't find that to be super helpful. So with that tool, so that one stays at one. Um, or does it stay at zero? Nope, it's at one. Okay. Um, Actually, I'm just going to hit cancel and redo that adjustment. Levels. Okay. There we go. So I just bring those two arrows in toward the peak and hit apply. Okay. Um, the best way to learn photo editing is just to play with this stuff. And I mean, you can always undo anything you don't like. So if you want to know what these other things do, highlight and shadow, exposure, curves, um, play with them, you know, see what they do. It's cool. You'll find some cool stuff. Okay. Next we want to edit the color. Now, um, I found the most helpful thing. See, all of these are for color. Okay. And I'll just show you the ones that I find helpful. Temperature and tint. Now, if you're, if you used an indoor lamp, um, that lighting can tend to be very yellow, very warm. So you want to cool your um, picture down. It'll turn your lighting a little bit more blue. I'm going to exaggerate it so you can see way more blue. Okay. Now, if your light is outdoor lighting and it's very cold and blue, or maybe you had a certain light bulb that was very cool and you want it to feel a little bit warmer, um, you can put it towards the warmer side. Okay. Um, as you can see, I'll do, do it a lot. Way warm. Okay. Um, all this editing stuff, s more subtle is better. Okay. I think I want a little bit more warmth because I like what it does to all those pinks. Um, but you don't ever need much. Or maybe I want the green background to stand out a little bit more. Then I can move it to the cooler side. But um, I'm going to do it just a titch warmer. Okay. And hit apply. Okay, another one I like is Vibrance. Um, this just makes your colors a little bit more vibrant. Now, don't overdo it, okay? Um, or underdo it. So that just makes your colors a little bit more vibrant. Or you can do that with hue and saturation. You can bring up your saturation a bit, okay? Obviously, you can overdo it, okay? Just a little. Doesn't take a lot. Okay. Um, so I think I've shown you everything I wanted to, um, rotating, cropping, fixing your lighting and fixing your color. Okay. At this point, when you have it, how you want it, you're going to share it. So, um, save. Okay. And it's always nice to rename it. So you know, which one edited or still life reference photo or, um,
I've done this several times, so you know, I gotta edit it at number one. Um, keep it a JPEG. Um, I think the quality should be fine, 90% high, and I don't think you need to change anything here. So you just hit download and choose where you're going to have that saved. Okay, mine's just in my drive. That's it. Thanks for watching. Save. Okay.